I'm Emma Louise Coffey and welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, we're focusing on spring grass and how to recalibrate the spring rotation planner for your farm. Plus, we hear about an upcoming Grass 10 event in Bandon from John Maher. But first, we have passed St. Patrick's Day and our target area grazed is 66%, with a cover of 8 to 900 kilograms on our first grazed paddocks. Michael Egan, grassland researcher, talks us through the very different reality on farms. We were hoping to have maybe in the region of 8 to 900 kilos back on those first grazed paddocks now. In reality, and, and I've talked to a lot of farmers in, in yesterday and today at discussion groups, majority farms with the first kind of 10 15 percent of ground graze is somewhere in the region of 350 to, to 450 kilos so we're probably somewhere in the region of half of where we want it to be um actually is, is what's back so we're, we're nowhere and and in terms of farmer a lot of farmers around me and say they're they haven't hit their targets and and they're well back on their area graze and the targets and, and that's probably a good thing um in certain cases so it's probably a good thing that farmers didn't hit that 60 percent because they now have um, fifty plus percent of their platform grazed left to graze between now and the end of the first rotation. So I think now is the time, and and possibly last couple of weeks is the time to reevaluate. Anyone that has done a feed budget really needs to update their feed budget. In terms of the end of the first rotation, this has to change now in a lot of farms. Yeah. Okay, so can you give us a guide on what to change and then how to recalibrate the rest of the rotation planner? If you're in a situation and some farms are somewhere in the region of mid 30s to low 40s percent grazed, they have around 300, 350 kilos back on their first paddocks and they're probably sitting at an average farm cover of 600 to 650. And that seems to be a lot of farmers that I talk to that are sitting somewhere in that bracket. The 650, if you have a cover of 650 and only 300 back on your your first grazed paddocks, you probably slightly, you have a lot of heavy covers left to graze off. If you only have 300 to 400 kilos back on that first 10, 15% of your paddock, of your farm that's grazed, you really need to adjust now and push out that first, first round. So what I've been saying to a lot of farmers, it's probably going to be somewhere in the region of the 12th to the 15th of, of April, but it's going to be different on farms. It might be slightly earlier on some farms and slightly later on other farms. Farms that have 500 back on their first grazed paddocks, they're probably talking somewhere in the region of the 7th to the 10th, and anything less than that, they're probably talking somewhere between the 12th to the 15th. It's going to be farm specific. It's going to be growth rate. So if you have 400 kilos back, we need to get another 800 kilos on that, that on those paddocks between now and the the, the, 5th, the 12th to the 15th of, of April. So we need to look at how many days are left. Um, I think at the moment, today is the, the 20th. So there's there's 11 days left in this month plus 12 to 15 days. So that's, you're talking somewhere in the region of 20, just shy of 30 days to grow eight 900 kilos that's an average of about 26, 27 kilos that we need to grow per day on average and those. Now, those paddocks are probably doing somewhere in the high teens at the moment, but we really need to adjust and probably push it somewhere between the 10th to the 15th of, of April, depending on what's back on those first graze paddocks at the moment. So it's not kind of a, a one blanket fits all. It needs to be kind of what's on each individual farm, what's back on the farm, how much nitrogen have they out, are they confident that's going to be able to do an average of of 25 to 30 kilos between now and the 15th of, of of April. If they are, excellent. If they're going to do more than it, bring it back a little bit more. And they're not going to do that. You need to extend it a little bit further. But I think the biggest risk now on farms, and I know it's going to sound quite stupid, is actually having too much grass when we get to that second round and actually pushing it too late and not adjusting it at the end. So what you've seen in a lot of farms is ground that was grazed in February that's three to five, between 350 and 450 kilos. Ground that was grazed in the last two to three weeks has between 350 and 400 kilos as well. So we've quite a flat wedge at the moment. So it's all coming back together and all that ground that's grazed is coming back quite very, very close together because temp, soil temperatures are up nationally across the, in the country. They're somewhere in the region of eight to seven and a half to eight and a half degrees at the moment. So they're all going to be a very, very flat wedge. So we need to be reactive in times rather than pro we need to be proactive rather than reactive um bet- between now and how we end that so if we have paddocks that are coming back and they're on a thousand kilos on the the 5th of, of april they can turn into 12 1300 kilos in a very very short period of time in that so you may need to ex- bring back your end your first round again from the 15th towards the 10th so you don't actually run into a surplus because the worst thing that can happen now is farmers are 
slightly too conservative if they have grass back on the farm at the moment. Now, I'm not, I know aware that some farmers don't have anything um, or don't have enough grass and don't have anything grazed either. But farmers that have ground grazed that are in that kind of 400 kilos now, um, growth rates are coming back. They've plenty of nitrogen out. Ensure that you don't run into a surplus by pushing the end round, the end date of the first round too late because if you start cutting silage in that period in, the chances are it's going to you're going to run into a surplus in the first second week of May and you have to feed that back. So it's kind of being proactive, keeping an eye on your covers and not just looking at average farm cover. It has to be what's on ground that's grazed and what's on ground that you still have to graze. And Mike, in terms of farm cover, what is the average uh, farm cover on, say, the pasture-based farms at the moment? Yeah, so we're looking at it last, um, just on Thursday. Um, and nationally, pasture-based farms have 30% grazed up until the middle of last week or the early last week and an average farm cover of some in the region of kind of mid 600s. So it, it's not in a in a terrible situation. There's farmers out there worse and there's farmers out there better as well. But uh, that's kind of where pasture-based data is roughly at the moment. It, it's not as extreme as we probably thought. And that's the reason, the main reason for that is farmers actually didn't do a huge amount of grazing. And that's why covers are, are quite high. And in terms of, um, you know, where farm cover is is lower and you're trying to stretch um you know your grass for the next three weeks what sort of a diet would you consider putting the cows on you know where grazed grass can't um make up you know the, the large proportion of the diet yeah so i i the for, unfortunate situation is a lot of farms a lot of the high quality good quality silage um is probably nearly gone at this stage and and, and what's What's left is probably some slightly poor quality that mightn't be the best for feeding cows. So if I think what you need to do first is assess where you are today currently at the moment. Decide when your end date is going to be. Ration out the area that's going to be grazed and the area of grass that you have available each day. And if it is somewhere between five to six, seven kilos, you're probably going to feed. I wouldn't like feeding anything more than six kilos of concentrate at the moment can be slightly risky. And if you have to do more than that, you need to get a a concentrate that's kind of slightly higher fiber in it, particularly hull, something like that, that'll slow, slow down digestion, reduces the risk of acidosis and kind of run into other problems. So going above six, seven kilos, make sure that you're, talk to your, um, your, your ruminant specialist in the feed mill just to ensure that the concentrate is suitable, that it can be fed over that high levels if you have to feed it. So I think constant high higher levels of concentrate is probably slightly better than poor quality silage if you have good quality silage you can do a combination of both but i think it's it's as much grass as you're able and allowed to feed then concentrate and then silage in whatever format you have it and um we've spoken before about the importance of um, not letting the farm cover fall too low and you know you're talking about five to five hundred kilos of dry matter per hectare can you re- reiterate the importance of this when we looked at a farm that maintained a, f- uh, a farm cover on the, the 5th, 4th of april a 500 and a farmer that dropped it to 375 on the on the 4th of april very similar opening farm covers and very similar stocking rates and similar type farms in terms of growth rates as well historically and the farm that maintained a farm cover of 500 kilos on the 4th of April at the start of the second rotation um, had, well, it was, if we look at the farm that dropped to 375 compared to the other farm, the farm that dropped it to 375 had growth rates of 45% lower growth rates for the following three weeks. So we're talking about 35 versus 27 kilos-ish um, daily growth rates for the following three weeks on average. And over half of the cow's diet on the 375 cover was made up of silage, of, of supplement in the form of silage and concentrate. So you're going to reduce your growth rates, number one. You're going to have a lot of the cow's diet going in in the form of supplement at a very, very important times just before breeding. So it, in terms of growth rates, it has huge knock-on effects in terms of reducing growth rates by 30-ish percent. Um, but in terms of cow performance pre-breeding, it has even larger detrimental effects um, if you drop it too low. So it's, it's very easy for me to sit here and say, don't drop it below 500. I think... If you drop it below 500, you'll run into much bigger problems coming into April because your farm cover is going to be just way too low and it's going to be very hard to get it back up again, particularly if you're in a situation where you don't have enough silage. Now, it's going to be very, very hard to get it in, in the next three weeks to a month. And, you know, you mentioned that farm cover on the average pasture-based farm is 650 and there's a huge variation there. There's some a lot higher and some a lot lower. And for farmers who would have followed the spring rotation planner and expected a kick in growth in March, you know, they have they have a low farm cover. If you're at the situation where you're at five or five fifty kilos now, what do you do? Yeah, and, and I was actually on, on the group that I was just coming from in Mallow, there was one farm at four hundred 
um, of an average farm cover today and very little silage in the well very little good quality silage and a lot of poor quality silage and the best thing that he can do now is is pick the end date that he needs to to get to and and for him we were talking about the 12th of, of april um and just ration out the available grass that you have left between now and the and the 12th of april um whatever concentrate you need to go in to fill that hole and supplement is what you can do and like someone that's on that kind of 500 450 500 kilos realistically they probably can't feed any more than four to five kilos of grass in the diet without dropping the farm cover even lower and what they need to do is just maintain that cover don't let it drop any more ration out what you have left ensure that you have enough nitrogen out that what's grazed is actually going to grow and kick start into growing again um, and try not drop it below so feed what you can feed in terms of grass and then fill the hole then with silage and concentrate and in terms of you mentioned that soil temperatures are rising so they're anywhere between seven and a half to eight and a half um, degrees celsius um, do you recommend farmers getting out to spread fertilizer um, based on soil temperature yeah i think we're probably gone beyond the soil temperature argument now in terms of, of fertilizer Um we're now in a situation that we need fertilizer out Um we had a cold snap at the weekend. Soil temperatures dropped to, to kind of two and three degrees. And I was looking at them this morning across the country. And we're, we're measuring it now on 30 different locations across the country. And it's just looking at it. So I think we need to get fertilizer out now. We're gone away from the argument that soil temperature is now the limiting factor. We need fertilizer out. Farmers need fertilizer out on gra- farms. If they have only their one application of urea gone, go with your second full bag of urea straight away. Um, and if you have nothing out, go with a good bag of, of urea as well at the moment. Soil temperatures are getting up. Day length is increasing, sunlight hours is increasing, the clocks are going forward, I think, on Saturday. So it's all kind of playing into place that if everything is in place at the moment in terms of allowing the grass to be able to grow, we need the fertilizer there so it actually can. Um, it, it is still quite cold compared to the normal year, but if we don't have that fertilizer out now, we're not going to get a kick in growth as soon as it's there. And if you're waiting for that temperatures to get quite high, so like we're, currently they're around 8 degrees this, today. I was just looking at them before I came in. They're currently about 8 degrees today, um, coming up from about 3 to 4 over the weekend. It's there. If we get that nitrogen out now, it is it can be converted and, and used by the plant. Even if it drops over the next couple of days, it'll still remain in the soil in, term, in the form of urea. And if we wait another week to put that out, you're kicking that start and growth 12 to 14 days down the line when we can't afford it. So it needs to go straight away. And if you have nothing out at the moment, you need to go with a good bag of urea and try and get that 70 units out by the 10th of April if there's nothing out. And if you have some out, try and get that 70 units out by the 1st of April. And I suppose the main thing to note here is that things can turn around very fast. Where yeah. we have the fertilizer out and where we have paddocks grazed off, it gives them a kickstart. And, you know, the situation is fairly bleak on some farms, but it can turn around um, in a very short space of time. Yeah, so look, at the situation is very bleak on some farms, but we can minimize it getting even bleaker. And that's maintaining a high farm or maintaining a minimum farm cover of 500 kilos, ensuring that you have enough fertilizer out that when the temperatures do come, it's going to kickstart in and start growing straight away, and ensuring that the cows are fully fed whatever grass you can afford to feed plus the supplement that you need to fill the hole great thank you mike no worries next week an event certainly worth heading to is an open day at tim crowley's farm in bandon tim is the grass 10 young farm winner from 2017 to find out more about the event i spoke to grass 10 campaign manager john maher we're hosting a walk on that farm on uh, march 29th at uh, 11 a.m and tim is located near bandon so because of the time of year we are uh, parking um, people at Bandon Rugby Club and getting buses to the farm it's not that far away so that, that's that's the background to Tim Tim's story about grassland is well Tim grew 15 tonnes of grass to matter per hectare in 2017 and has been improving in terms of grass production over the years and improving in terms of or increasing in terms of cow numbers so the farm is growing more grass he's also acquired additional land that requires a bit of work and we'll demonstrate that on the day so our, our main purpose is to get to Tim to tell us how he grows this amount of grass on the farm, the pieces of the jigsaw in terms of, you know, grassland management, grassland measurement, improving soil fertility, putting the right grazing infrastructure in place. And Tim is also a member of the cultivar study, um, which means that he's evaluating grass varieties. So really it's not a case of one thing being good in, in Tim's farm in terms of growing grass, it's all the pieces. So anything from receding to to grazing management to grassland measurement, you name it. And Tim has a very, very good handle on it. 
And look, his, his knowledge has been enhanced over the years, but I suppose the moment of truth for him came um, when he went to New Zealand and he, the, the piece that really got him going in terms of grassland and, and in particular grassland measurement. You're down with Tim on the 29th. Um, what can people expect from the Open Day? What can they expect to see? OK, what they expect to see is is, is, uh, is Tim's uh, new addition to the farm. Um, Tim will be on the introductory board and outline his farming system. Then you'll go hear about reseeding, you'll hear about uh, grass and measurement, you'll hear about the great infrastructure he put in place in terms of roadways, water, you know, the fencing, the approach he took with this new land, because it was, it was it was virtually uh, a wilderness and he took this on. And, uh, you know, you, you'll hear all those pieces and then you'll come back to the very first board where Tim started out with you and you can get the question, you can, you can ask him the questions then about the bits and pieces that we've missed along the way or that you want to ask Tim about. So it's a case of going to Tim's grassland story and hearing all the pieces and get him to meet Tim at the end and ask him the questions that, you know, may be more relevant to the, the person who wants to know. That's great. Thank you, John. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Michael Egan and John Maher for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey, and join me next time for your Dairy Edge.